Hello! A different kind of video today. I frequently get comments to the tune of This guy can't be Iraqi, his English is too good! Some people have even claimed I'm from this or that part of the US. Some say Rhode Island, some say Vermont, some even say God forbid Wisconsin. <laughs> the last one's a joke, but you get what I mean. Apparently something unspecific, even generic, can be heard in my accent. As unenthusiastic as I am about being called white, <laughs> This does ask an interesting question though, why is it that so many quote unquote foreigners speak English so well? Stick around for my English journey and some Hakim tips on language learning. English is an international lingua franca, a common language. Unsurprisingly, the development of capitalism and the march of colonialism played the biggest role in its global spread. As a consequence of the growth of the British Empire, English was carried on to distant lands as an administrative language, to places as far away as India, Australia and the US. Also, my own country, but we kicked the British out fairly quickly. Logically, with new rulers comes an industry for that language to grow in a region it wasn't present in before. Be it out of economic necessity or prestige, the languages of rulers prior to this last century of ours became a force of their own. Spanish or Portuguese in Latin America, Persian amongst the Mughals, or yes, English basically everywhere. The real impetus for the spread of English, though, was its longevity as a lingua franca. As the British Empire waned, the US rose, another English-speaking power. Of course, the world in the early 20th century was very different from today. For example, in Europe, German and French were still common use languages in so-called high circles, with German still being a popular publishing language in the scientific spheres of, for example, Scandinavia. In the 20th and 21st centuries, as empires crumbled and a different world arose, we got the development of common market economies, increased trade across the globe, boycotts of the former central powers, and of course, all the undesirables, such as the early Soviet state. Walls went up and fell, the Cold War erupted and died down, and several languages, previously way more popular, slowly gave way to English. This was by no means complete, but the trend is obvious. Pretty much any teenager from any corner of the globe has consumed English language media, and any university student has had to confront at least some English sources. If you're American, think of the last time you've had to engage with a Portuguese, Hindi, Arabic, or Russian language source last. What about media? It's probably not the most common thing that you do. And that's kind of the crux of the matter. Whether you're in media, the sciences, art, or whatever else, English is commonly used as an international medium of communication. That's why Brazilian, French, and Japanese actors appear in English language movies speaking English. Meanwhile, relatively few American actors appear in international cinema speaking a foreign language. Likewise, if you make something and want to have widespread appeal, you make it in English, even down to the price when using official translating services. It's not unsurprising that translating from English to another language is always cheapest. Meanwhile, translating from, for example, Vietnamese to Persian is definitely a bigger blow to the budget. Scott is the point here. English being globalized means that it no longer really belongs to anybody or any just one nation, but also it means that a lot more people will end up speaking it than originally intended. Back to the video in just a second. Let's hear from today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. For a lot of research that I do for my videos, I end up hitting pages that aren't available in my location. That's frustrating, as you can imagine. Geo-restriction really does suck, but not with Atlas VPN. For those unaware, a virtual private network makes all of your internet traffic travel through an encrypted tunnel. This way, it protects you from spying, public Wi-Fi dangers, and hides your IP address and your online activities. It even allows you to change your location for all your researching needs. Developed by top cybersecurity specialists and IT engineers in 2019, Atlas VPN was created to make the internet accessible and secure for everybody. Currently, it has more than 6 million users worldwide and boasts the best VPN deal on the market with the most affordable online protection plan for just under $2 per month, if you can believe it, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So, what are you waiting for? Go down to the description and click that link and use my code Hakeem to get a 3-year subscription for just $183 a month with 3 months free. But that's not all. You get blazing fast speeds for streaming or gaming, unlimited protection for all your devices, an inbuilt ad and malware blocker, and you'll get to save some extra cash as Atlas VPN will find you the best deals online from everything from your online subscriptions to airlines, hotels, and more. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. It means you can get a three-year subscription for just $183 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Time is running out, so get your deal by clicking the link in the video description below. Massive thanks to Atlas VPN for the sponsorship. This is what allows me to pay my editor fairly, so the support is highly appreciated. All right, back to the video. So, how did I and many others learn English? I am incredibly flattered by the people that think my English is halfway decent. It's amazing how learning quote-unquote native-like pronunciation can go so far in affecting people's perceptions. To start off, the vast majority of the world teaches English to their school children from a fairly young age. In fact, it's one of the most easily accessible jobs for so-called expats when they go abroad, be it in Brazil or Japan. 
Furthermore, if you come from a family with university research backgrounds, most likely you'll have at least one parent that speaks at least decent, albeit clunky and academic, English. I'm an example of this. Both my parents speak languages that reflect their academic origins. My mother speaks English as a result of a research background, and my father speaks Russian, owing to the fact that he studied and spent many years in the USSR. Unsurprisingly, having a competent speaker of a language at home does help in learning it somewhat. I personally, though, never cared for English class in school. If anything, the loud, louder, loudest and eat, eat, eat and stuff drove me insane. For the longest time, I couldn't differentiate between much and many. Much balls, many balls? Many, <laughs> many money, much money? <laughs> <laughs> Such a stupid language, I swear. In fact, my learning was mostly done the same way it was done for most third world children, through English language movies, shows, music, and most importantly, in my personal case, video games. Equipping an item is a strange thing to say in daily conversation, but not in Resident Evil dialogue. Long before I even spoke English, this was already burned into my mind. Silent Hill puzzles, with their long notes and weirdly constructed Japanese background English, further helped to develop a creative sense for what English is supposed to sound like. Hmm. I don't remember this being here before. Versus just what is grammatically correct. If I had to put a number on it, I'd say 60% maybe of my English development came from video games. This is the final battle! As for movies, well, we still have Home Alone and The Mask on VHS, so... Also, just a tangent, but have you, have you ever seen the house they live in in Home Alone? If my memory serves me right, don't they live in, like, Chicago or something? One of the most expensive- by the way, yeah, I can't say this. Sh Chicago? Chicago? Sh yeah, you, you, you see my point. Anyways, yeah, it's one of the most expensive places on Earth to live in, right? Yet, they live in a six-bedroom, six-bathroom house. What does the dad do in the movie? I, I don't even remember. It, is it even their place? The house is apparently worth, like, nearly two million dollars now. With the actual place the house is located in is in some county I've never heard of called Winnetka, which apparently is one of the wealthiest places in the entire United States. The ideology is practically dripping off of the screen. This is how the US tries to portray its living standards to the rest of the world. Even five-year-old me saw through this bullshit all those years ago. Anyways, back on track. With some exposure to English underneath my belt, I started engaging... Underneath my belt? Under my belt. See, you get my point. I started engaging with the English language internet, which helped me somewhat. What really catapulted my English, however, was reading. Yes, I know, a boring answer. I can actually trace the one author that contributed the most to this growth, and it was Lovecraft. The breadth of vocabulary he used in his works was very eye-opening to me, and really influenced the way I spoke early on. Lovecraft was the first person to actually make me respect English as a language, rather than just as a communication medium. Reading helps you see how native speakers construct sentences themselves. It even teaches you how native speakers intentionally break rules and how you can do the same. What's important though is keeping a wide diversity in media because otherwise your English will sound clunky, archaic, or just weird. Having really fallen in love with Lovecraft, that was an unintentional pun, my English was heavily influenced after that and I actively tried to use words he used in my everyday English. Unsurprisingly, it made my speech more verbose but also just weird. Sometimes there are traces of that left in my English, especially if you watch my early videos, but most of it has been weeded out by now, I hope. After a lot of reading, I started getting politically involved and started writing essays in English for fun. That was kind of sporadic, but definitely helped me improve and flex some creativity in the language, and now, after many years, I started making videos which amounts to several thousands of words written down scripts each month for years. I'm not saying you need to do that much, but it is nonetheless an interesting exercise if you want to go down that route. Of course, having done med school, where the only decent sources are in English, especially mnemonics, remember the dumbbells nonsense? I'd say that or soap brain MD. <laughs> what I just said either haunts you or unlocks some weird suppressed memory somewhere. Basically, my point is, you're forced to speak at least semi-decent English in most academic fields, and even more so in medicine. Here's what I personally did. I would read, write, listen, and try to speak a single paragraph's worth of text every day in English. I do this with other languages I speak as well. This hits all the core uses of a language, and doing this daily means genuine improvements will come quicker than you think. Seriously, try it for a month and see how far you get. Next, for pronunciation, the most convincing part, try to replicate as closely as possible the phonemes of native speakers. The English A sound, or the TH sound, can particularly be tricky for non-natives. For example, lots of non-native Arab speakers of English say clothes instead of clothes. I mean, that was a bit exaggerated, but yeah, listen to an old Arab woman speak and you're gonna hear clothes. <laughs> this is a lot of in-the-mirror funny mouth movements, constantly repeating some word or phrase from some popular media, till you get close enough, it will pay off. If you want to get technical with it, follow an oral pronunciation chart, which shows you where each sound needs to originate from in your mouth or throat to come out sounding right. IPA stuff is boring, but will have you sounding, well, at least pretty close to native. But science can't fix stupid. English is just downright dumb shit like water, in which half the word isn't even pronounced. Water? <laughs> it's ridiculous. 
Don't even get me started on whatever language British people speak. If I fuck asked you to come in and have a cup of tea, then you're telling me what the fuck... Some words you just need to learn whole, instead of leaning back on those phonemes you learned. Laughter and daughter are different by just a single letter, but that changes the way the word is said entirely. Woman and women both have that O in the beginning, but the W sound turns into a W sound. Woman, women. Try it yourself. One more example for shits and giggles. Wind and mind. Now what is this nonsense? Why isn't it mind? Why isn't it wind? <sighs> Luckily, English is one of the trickiest languages in the sphere, with most languages being relatively consistent in their pronunciation. Most importantly of all, though, dare to speak and make mistakes. In my neck of the Arab woods, <laughs> that's a stupid thing to say, we say fukusanek, which basically roughly translates to let your tongue go. If you don't start speaking, you won't ever learn. Furthermore, people will understand you regardless of how many grammar mistakes you make. That's the beauty of language. We can understand a random string of words together even with little conjugation. Boy eat peanut stuck throat is easily understood as some kid is choking on a peanut, even if it isn't exactly grammatically correct. This goes even further in languages like Arabic or Russian. By the way, some languages you'll need for subject-specific use cases. In that case, no need to learn it that well. My father, who I'd say can't speak English, has no problem reading and understanding highly technical academic papers in his field in English, but can't hold a casual conversation to save his life. Now one of the most important things is vocabulary lists, and this is what I'm going to leave you off with. The more words you know, regardless of the grammar, the more you'll be able to understand and be able to communicate. When an English speaker reads or hears Spanish, they understand the common words between the two languages. Words like animal, brutal, artificial, chocolate, inevitable, etc, etc. This allows you to construct at least some understanding of the piece of media you're looking at or hearing. Now, if you had more in your vocab arsenal, regardless of your ability to conjugate, you'll be able to get into 70, 80, or even 90% comprehension. Best of all, for every language out there practically, there is a 1000 most common words used list, which will immediately help you get the gist of most casual conversation. Something that can be learned in a month. The Quran, or Quran, as some fucking Americans say, one of the most beautiful, elegant, and complex texts known to man, can be by vast majority understood by exposure to only 800 words. Is that insane? Okay, I've bored enough people with this nonsense. I've surprisingly been asked a lot about this, so now people can stop asking. As for those that think I'm some white guy from Arkansas or something, well that's just plain racism for you. A brown isn't supposed to speak English properly, I guess. <laughs> if you enjoy what I do, then please consider supporting me on Patreon, it really does help. I'd like to thank my patrons, so thank you to Matt Morland, Romy Senpai, at JDIVX, Julian Gayton, Jerome Crumlish, BRR, Daniel Orr, Light Trail Fan, Lucas the Locomotive Engineer, Alex Fitz, Par23, Mike Durris, Hamed Sawilam, Unicorn, Darth Komnaus, Anna Phillips, Joy Richardson, Justin Karlovich, Cooper Martin, Hunter Thompson, Barnabas Corum, Mugray X, Snow, Sophia, Katamar Lennon, Addy, Maple, Yang Yu, and Madadarmo. Thanks for watching.